What's up, everyone? And welcome to That Crypto Hustle, a community podcast and a one-stop shop where visionaries, entrepreneurs, and hustlers share their blockchain and cryptocurrency expertise. I'm your host, Luna Vega, a digital marketer turned crypto addict, and my goal is to help spread blockchain and cryptocurrency awareness, all while fostering collaboration between all of us. If you dig the show, make sure to give us a review on iTunes, all while following us on Instagram, YouTube, and or Twitter. Let's do this. Hey guys, Luna here. Welcome to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast here in New York City. Extremely excited about today's episode. I'm here with Jeffrey Zerland, who is the co-founder of Axie Infinity. So we're going to talk about everything gaming related, most importantly, blockchain gaming, and how it can become more accessible to help catalyze mass adoption. Uh, Axie Infinity is running in the Ethereum blockchain. So, Jeffrey, thanks for coming on the show today. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, I'd love to hear from you. How did you get started in the blockchain industry? What brought you into the space? Yeah, definitely. So, I was actually working in the kind of conventional startup space. Thought that it was a little bit saturated. Um, you know, a lot of the ideas that were being kind of tested out were just kind of iterations or kind of improvements on pre-existing products and ideas. Um, I read Pe uh, Zero to One by Peter Thiel for probably like the fourth time uh, in the fall of 2017 and yeah, decided that I kind of wanted to make a change, um, move into a more dynamic uh, space somewhere where I could actually, you know, kind of create a new market. Um, so I started looking into Ethereum and smart contracts I um, thought the kind of financial applications were really intriguing, but it wasn't really until I got into uh, a game called CryptoKitties um, that I kind of, you know, see it as something that I might be interested in uh, professionally. So, uh, yeah. So, um, were you, so you were part of like the early days of CryptoKitties, if you will. What, uh, what brought you in? And so you played the game actually, right? Yeah, so I was an early CryptoKitty player. Um, I went on some kind of uh, CryptoKitty streams. Um, yeah, one of my cats like won a beauty contest. Um, <laughs> there was there was there were some there were some contests, and basically they had a big prize, and I was really fortunate to win. Um, yeah, I worked on a application, kind of a community built application on top of CryptoKitties called Kitty Hats, where we uh, allowed people to basically attach. Uh, accessories like tokenized hats, gloves, things like that, even paintings um, to their CryptoKitty tokens. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of like, you know, how I got my start in the space. I started to meet a lot of really interesting people who are also working on um, other uh, non-fungible token uh, projects. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like how everything started. So essentially, you used CryptoKitties as a platform to learn about blockchain, and most importantly, that's probably where you generated some of the ideas for Axie Infinity, no? Yeah, sure. I think that, uh, I think that a lot of the, yeah, the inspiration um, for Axie um, was yeah, kind of derived from the early CryptoKitty community. A lot of our influencers, a lot of our early players um, were also from the CryptoKitty community. So I think that, yeah, one of the amazing things about these uh, early NFT communities was that they kind of uh, acted as uh, kind of like, you know, early kind of uh, almost social networks on the blockchain where people um, with kind of like like-minded individuals could kind of meet, exchange ideas, um, and start to get to know each other better. So were you really actively involved in the Reddit community of CryptoKitties, would you say? Or is that where you learned more about the possibilities? Yeah, so a lot of these NFT games, they primarily use uh, Discord uh -huh. as their communication channel. So, you know, yeah, there are you know, people who you know, kind of almost live in the, in the Axie Infinity Discord and the CryptoKitty Discord. Um, that's where, you know, I met, I met uh, Dan and Jordan, who actually are now working at OpenSea. Um, they basically, yeah, they wanted someone to kind of help them with kitty hats to kind of help evangelize it, um, help people kind of show people how to use it and popularize it. So that's what I did um, in the early on. And, uh, you know, through that, I actually met... Um, Trung and Psychout, who are also on the Axie team. Um, Trung is the founder, um, 
And uh, yeah, you know, I guess you know they knew me from CryptoKitties, so there was some trust involved. They'd seen uh, what I'd you know previously done, what my like my, what my strengths were, um, and uh, yeah, we were able to kind of come together, uh, start working on Axie um, early last year, and yeah, I guess you know the rest kind of uh, emerged from that. Yeah. So you mentioned the fact that this is your one year anniversary. So what is the what's sort of the things that you're the most happy about, like in retrospective, and how involved is your user base right now? Like what are some, I mean, I guess what's some of the feedback you're getting in general? Yeah, definitely. So I think that blockchain games, um, they represent a paradigm shift where the kind of walls between players and developers are, you know, um, kind of being broken down. And because our players, you know, they actually own their assets, they have, um, you know, they feel real ownership within the game, within the within the network. And what we've seen is that, you know, although there are only, you know, around 700 people who play Axie on a monthly basis, um, you know, they those those a lot of our community members are acting like team members, right? So we're, we're having uh, developers who are building mini games, uh, tools, beginner guides. Um, you know, people have gotten Axie tattoos. Um, well, there's only one, there's one Axie tattoo. Wow. There's an Axie musical. Shout out to Cloud, Cloud White Whale. He's actually, wow. you know, a um, really creative guy. You guys should check, check it out. There's, he's working on, I think, an Axie rap album. There's two, two songs. So what we've seen is that, you know, the community is really, um, I think, way more involved than they would be in a conventional game because they actually, you know, feel this, uh, ownership in the game with their assets, you know, as the network grows and gains value, um, their kind of yeah, their incentives are more aligned with the developers than in a traditional game where I think developers, you know, really see their players as kind of uh, you know customers, right? Like I don't, we don't see our players as customers at all. We see them as partners, our friends in many cases. It's really interesting you bring that up because in marketing, uh, I mean. Individuals still talk about it, but the concept of gamifying has always been huge in the marketing game because we know that once you're able to gamify something, customers become more loyal because, like you say, there's more at stake. So I would love, and just because I secretly want Facebook to die, even though I'm always on the platform, I'd be really interested in, in understanding from your like what your vision is of perhaps what social media could be and what gaming could bring to social media. Definitely. So, I mean, what we saw with the early internet, right, is that even before platforms like MySpace and Facebook took off, we saw really vibrant communities centered around games like uh, Diablo, um, Neopets is probably my favorite example, right, where, uh, yeah, I think, you know, the community was... Uh, the communities around these games were really, you know, um, were really involved. They were, you know, talking to each other. This was all way before, you know, kind of mainstream social media um, kind of really took off. So, yeah, we think that, you know, blockchain games, one of the early purposes that they'll serve is kind of, uh, you know, kind of proto uh, so social networks on the blockchain that kind of uh, unite and connect, the, uh, yeah, different blockchain enthusiasts. So. So let's talk about the negatives within the blockchain gaming industry and some of the challenges that we all publicly know about that CryptoKitty had about a year ago with the network and Ethereum network. Have you guys experienced any of that as far as the slowdown and what have you or your team has done in order to address some of these issues? Yeah, definitely. So right now, uh, the scalability of the Ethereum blockchain is something that, uh, you know, it's kind of, you know, something that a lot of people are thinking about, talking about, right? The kind of, the core, the core issue kind of stems from, you know, the more secure you make a blockchain, um, kind of, that comes with a trade-off, right? Um, so you can either have, you know, very, a very high, a throughput or very, you know, transaction speed blockchain, but with very low security, or you can have something like Ethereum, which is very secure, um, but, you know, right now um, is suffering from a little bit of a scalability issue. So, yeah, there's a lot of really interesting work that's being done. Um, one of the popular solutions um, that people are building right now are, are these things called layer two uh, sidechains. 
um, which is basically where you um, kind of put a lot of the uh, yeah, you put a lot of the activity on a, on a, something called the side chain, which um, doesn't necessarily need to be reflected on the main chain at all times. Um, so it's kind of like, so there's something called Loom Network, which... That's what I was going to ask, yeah. There's Loom Network, which is something that we've, you know, we're building on. We really like the Loom team. You can kind of think of it as like a EOS on Ethereum. Um, so yeah, you know, so we're, we're, we're taking a look at, you know, different scalability solutions. Right now, our solution has been basically to keep the ownership and the kind of transfers of ownership on chain um, while, you know, using good code to kind of mitigate transaction costs and making it so that the, the gameplay is actually, so when people uh, battle axes, that's just done on our server. Um, we, we haven't felt the need to kind of, you know, put, put the battles on the blockchain, which would have dramatically increased the cost to our users. So what is the most expensive, or the most expensive axie that someone sold? Which, or which, which is? Yeah, sure, so. Gender neutral? <laughs> I, so yeah, so right now axes do not have gender. So there is so it's there. Very politically <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. So there have been axes that have sold for as high as fifty ether. Um, wow. So, so that would be like well, today is not as much. Yeah. But if it was in the three hundred dollar range, it would have been like fifty. Yeah. I think like the highest the highest USD value for an axe is you know somewhere in the five thousand. $5,000 range. That's pretty decent. So if you play Axie enough, you'd be able to buy a car in real life, or like, I mean, a used car, obviously. <laughs> I mean, so, you know, what, what we've been, all, as game developers, all we're trying to do is, you know, we see Axies as collectibles, and we're just trying to add as much utility to the collectibles as possible. Um, yeah, that said, um, we have seen some really amazing things from our community members. Um, there's actually... Uh, a student from Singapore named Useless. Um, he's uh, won a bunch of Axie tournaments. Um, he's really good at playing the game, and I think you know he's profited over a hundred ETH, uh, wow. which is you know pretty good for a student. Um, and you know he's also just like really into the game. He's, he builds tools, so yeah, you know I think it's like a whole new paradigm of gaming, and so, something new, really exciting is happening. A new economy as well. I mean, I know that gaming in general, outside of the blockchain as well individuals are able to earn money but with blockchain there's probably another element of involvement because like you said like you're really breeding and you really have to cater so can you explain to us how the game works because I, I i love i love the fact that it's kind of like two worlds come together where not only you have to breed but you also have to take care of your axie so how did you guys come up with that idea Sure. So the yeah, I think the inspiration for Axie um, yeah comes from you know a lot of games that we grew up playing, right? Like Pokemon, Tamagotchi, and things like Neopets as well, right? So currently the game is centered around you know collecting the Axies. You can battle them to get experience points. You then use the experience points to to breed them. So it's trying to go for a kind of like optimal. Uh, moves, move combinations that are really good in battle. So what we've seen is that you know the, a lot of the best breeders tend to be um, some of the people who do really well in tournaments as well. And what we're seeing is that the population is actually kind of naturally evolving over time um, to be you know kind of like better at battling. Um, there's also you know so we're we you know we want to continually add gameplay elements. So we don't we don't see Axie as you know, it's maybe maybe eight percent done in our eyes, right? So we're we're going to continue adding gameplay. The next um, kind of gameplay that we're adding is a land system where players will be able to, where players can own uh, land, you know, up, uh, harvest resources, use those resources to make like Axie homes, um, battle monsters for you know different um, yeah like rare kind of crafting materials. Uh, things like that, and the land system will also serve as a a hosting pad for user generated content where basically players will be able to kind of host uh, clickable wormholes on their land we 'll give them an SDK to basically allow them to you know really easily build kind of experiences on top of the Axie platform because what we 've seen is that you know, a lot of our players are building mini games tools, and um, you know from our community what we 're hearing is that you know 
our community wants us to natively integrate a lot of the best kind of user generated content related to Axie. So we see the land system as, you know, not just adding more gameplay, um, but also, yeah, serving this dual purpose of being a, a launch pad or a way to kind of natively integrate this user generated content. It's almost like you guys are creating this completely different world and people are completely immersing themselves in it. That could, I mean, that could be a scenario. Yeah, I mean, what we've seen is that our user base is really engaged. Um, I think, you know, the average, you know, the average player, you know, has, you know, kind of put around, you know, $500 worth of Ethereum into our game. Um, so, you know, what we're seeing is that, you know, the, the level of conviction and the kind of buy-in, um, not just literally, but like emotional buy-in, um, is is really strong, and you know, and I think that's something that will just kind of snowball and continue to get stronger as the network effects grow, as barriers to adoption start to um, kind of decrease, right? So yeah, I think like you know, barriers to, to adoption is probably something that um, you know I think is is people probably want to hear about and kind of understand right now. So so what we've seen is that um, you know once we can get people into our ecosystem. Um, they get really, you know, they fall in love with the artwork, they fall in love with the community, they start to do amazing things. Um, but what we've seen is that, you know, there is a bit of a barrier to actually, um, you know, kind of entering, right? So right now, in order to play Axie, um, people have to download something called MetaMask, which is a, a Web3 wallet. It's like... Um, so it's really involved right now. It's not, I mean, you need to be pretty technically savvy to be able to play the game. Yeah, I mean, what we've seen is that a lot of our early adopters are kind of like tech evangelists, you know, people who are interested in emerging technologies. Um, that said, we are seeing more and more kind of like traditional gamers seeing like Axie streams and saying, oh, what is this? I want to play. Because um, I, th I think like cryptocurrencies do you know, make more sense to gamers than the average person, right? Because they are used to these uh, kind of in-game economies and these uh, digital digital currencies, even if they are kind of like centralized and uh, walled in by game developers um, in the conventional or the mainstream gaming space. So what are next steps for you guys at this point? How do you plan on continuing as far as getting more of a user base? I know that when I saw you mentioned that there's a a lot of individuals within your community who are asking for t-shirts. So, I mean, just the fact that you guys have such a loyal community should already feel like such a great accomplishment. But what do you hope uh, sort of the next launch pad will be to help gain even more users at this point? Yeah, so we're, work we're currently working on a variety of initiatives. Um, so one um, is to basically allow our game to onboard people without the creation of a uh, crypto wallet, uh, right? Yeah, so, you make a huge yeah. So that's I mean that's one that's one area where something like Loom Network um, kind of comes into play, where we can onboard them directly onto a side chain. Um, that can be kind of like more of a more of a centralized process, and they wouldn't have to kind of interact with the blockchain until they actually you know want to sell um, their asset. That's cool. So any sort of like last thoughts about, you know, what are some of the positive things you're seeing in the blockchain gaming community and what you hope to see more of in the future? Yeah, definitely. So I think, you know, there's a lot of interest. So I was just at NFT NYC. We're at kind of like an associated, that's where we met, kind of like an associated event. So there's a lot of excitement. There are more developers coming into this space. There are more kind of uh, VC funds that are looking to invest in promising projects. So yeah, I mean, I think that, you know. Uh, well, gaming is huge and it's just continuing to be, I mean, there's, a whole, there's whole networks that are dedicated to gaming that are not blockchain related. So I think it's just a matter of time. Like you said, perhaps something like Loom Network can really help in getting people involved, because I think the whole process of getting your wallet installed, like it's not grandma, grandma friendly per se. So I think that once, I mean, you know, younger teenagers like understand how to potentially use it, I mean, even though I know you guys already have that in your user base, then, I mean, personally, and again, I'm not a gamer, so correct me if I'm wrong, but I just feel like there's probably more incentive to be active on a blockchain game, because uh, not only, I mean, the 
community is, is tighter, but also the fact that you're also dealing with, uh, what's it called? Um, ah, you're dealing with essentially uh, the ability to gain a net worth, if you will, and not as much if you're doing regular gaming. Sure, I mean, I think, you know, one of the kind of principles underlying all blockchain tech, all blockchain apps, all blockchain communities, is the idea for users of the network to um, kind of, to actually, you know, do well as the value of the network grows, right? So, right, for, let's just like use a very cliched example of Facebook, right? Like we all create lots of content for Facebook, um, but, you know, ex except for very few, you know, kind of like big influencers and stuff, it's very hard to kind of like turn, monetize or, t you know, actually kind of see the value of all that content that and you generate. Your influencers have issues with monetizing, yeah. So, yeah, I, th I think that, you know, generally what we're going to see across blockchain gaming um, and across just kind of like decentralized applications is this blurring of, you know, you know, the core team and the community where, you know, eventually in the future, you know, these, uh, these communities will, you know, kind of start to operate more like uh, DAOs. I'm familiar with with those, like basically kind of where, yeah, you know, there's the, the, the meaning uh, it's like the idea of being a team member and just a member of the community. It's like not really. It's there's no. It's harder to kind of tell the distinction. So Jeff, as we're wrapping up this interview, I would love to hear from you your thoughts about the future of blockchain gaming, and most importantly, what are some of the positive? What are some of the negative? And what can we do as a community to really help things move forward and help mass adoption in the long run? Sure. So, I mean, first off, like, I think that it's just still very early days um, for, you know, kind of non-fungible tokens and blockchain games. You know, basically, this whole movement's, you know, just a little over a year old. So a lot of the infrastructure that is going to enable mass adoption is currently being built out. That's why, so at Axie, you know, our policy is to kind of, you know, we're building a community, we're building, um, you know, amazing, we have amazing artwork that basically we believe will be able to kind of ride the waves of infrastructure improvements um, over time. So, yeah, I think that, you know, a lot of things like wallet friction, scalability, they're being, you know, they're being looked at by some really, uh, really smart teams in the space right now. And, uh, you know, I'm, you know, very optimistic that, you know, some of these barriers are going to lower um, and that, you know, these, um, yeah, these kind of grassroots or organic blockchain gaming communities are, you know, kind of going to start to snowball and, um, yeah, I, th I think just generally like the network effect will kind of, you know, uh, amplify um, over time. Um, and what we're seeing is that, you know, especially, you know, within our community is that once people enter our ecosystem, they make friends, um, you know, they, they kind of, uh, they, they really kind of, yeah, feel like they have a stake in the game. Um, and they start to build content. So what we're seeing is that, you know, the user acquisition and the user numbers um, are, the user acquisition is slower, the user numbers are, are, uh, are kind of lower, but the, the amount of engagement um, with the early communities is, is way higher than with conventional games. So I think basically over the, over the long term that will kind of compound and um, yeah, I think something really special and powerful can happen. So let me ask you as well, what are other games like Ethereum blockchain games that if we're interested in this space we should be looking at as well. I mean there's a super famous Crypto Kitties, but what are other games beyond Axie Infinity that you're really, really excited about? I'm kind of nervous now because like I feel like I, I have a lot of friends in the space that so like if I don't shout out their project. No, I'm just kidding. Um yeah, so it's, you know, some things that I've been looking at recently. So there's a kind of like a user-generated open world um, game that's uh, coming called The Sandbox. Um, so I think, you know, that's something definitely to keep an eye on. Uh, Neon District is another one that, you know, it looks like it has like really amazing art. I think their uh, founder, coin artist, like knows 
how to kind of engage and build communities. So I think you know that's also a project that I think would kind of potentially naturally use some of the benefits of the blockchain. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, I'm trying to think what else. I, th I think you know Decentraland has a really interesting concept. Um, there are a lot of Decentraland um, kind of. Uh, there are a lot of members of our community who are also in the Decentraland community. So I think you know there's some interesting stuff going on there as well. Um, so yeah, I think you know those are those are the main projects that um, I'm looking out for right now. And uh, I meant to ask you: Are there? Exchangers where you can exchange gaming coins? Does that exist? Or is an Axie coin available on Coinbase? Or is there like specific exchangers for a game? Or is that something that could potentially be invented in the future? I mean, I guess you'd have to all use the same token now or the same platform for it to work. I don't know. It's, it's like Ethereum. <laughs> Um, exactly. Yeah, no, but I mean, there are like there are decentralized game marketplace or non fungible token marketplaces that are emerging. OpenSea is an amazing one. Um, probably like the dominant player, or definitely the dominant player in the kind of like the NFT market space. Um, yeah. Uh, and, the, and when you mean NFT, because you've been referring that for people who don't know, what is that? Yeah, an NFT is a is like the abbreviation for a non fungible token. Um, basically, uh, a unique a unique token that has like kind of different metadata, right? So, like, uh, you know, Ethereum is is an example of like a fungible token. You can chop it up into like equal parts. Um, whereas, yeah, like an Axie, you can't like you can't really chop it up. Um, and yeah, so. So yeah, I mean, I'd love to finalize with uh, your experience with CryptoKitties. So you were like one of the very first. Breeders, right? Or, or you were like part of the early breeding stage. Is that correct? Yeah. So I'd love to hear about, and, and when obviously when that happened, it was mind boggling for everyone. And I think it also happened at the right time because it was just like right during the bull market. And it really helped individuals sort of start thinking about assets in a different way and like this idea of having completely virtual assets and, and virtual art to some extent. So as someone who like breeded really early on, I'd love for you to share your personal experience and what sort of what that taught you about what kind of world we could potentially live in in the future. Yeah, so I was, I was an early uh, CryptoKitty player um, yeah, but I, you know, I think what I found interesting about CryptoKitties was the community. There were a lot of you know people who were interested in emerging technologies um, in that Discord. Um, so I was an early player, early like content creator. Like I, I did some uh, some streams. I worked on a project called Kitty Hats, which was an early like layer uh, two experience, or like basically an application built on top of CryptoKitties, which allowed users to attach things like accessories and actually even artwork to their crypto kitties. So um, yeah, it was, it was like a really, it was a really interesting experience. I met a lot of um, really uh, close friends there. I met the Axie co-founders um, through, through crypto kitties as well. So I think, yeah, I think what it showed is that, you know, the uh, blockchain games are very community oriented um, and you know, even early ones are, you know, you're seeing some really interesting things where the community members are able to kind of get some value out of the network, whether it's, you know, by playing and uh, making Ethereum or whether it's by, you know, make, uh, making content and, um, you know, kind of being rewarded through different tokens, right? So I was, I, I was able to, like, use my influence to win a cat, which I then sold for 10 ETH. All right, because I, I, my cat won like a beauty contest, right? So I was like, I guess like one of the more well-known people in the CryptoKitties Discord. So I was like, oh, like can you vote for my cat, right? And then I was able to accumulate a lot of votes. Actually, I think more than there were like even there were bots that were trying to get votes, but I, I think somehow was I was able to beat them. Um, so yeah, I think like generally like those blockchain games will be very social. They have been very social. They're places for uh, kind of like early uh, kind of like blockchain and hobbyist evangelists to kind of come together right now. Um, in the future, I think um, what's going to really kind of kickstart and 
um, fuel this movement is this idea of you know actually caring about your uh, players, not looking at them as customers, but looking at them as partners. Um, you know, people who add value to your network and you know should should be able to kind of uh, share in the benefits um, that kind of accrue as the network uh, grows and um, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, I love the point you're bringing up, it's almost like you're building an ecosystem when you're building a game and then you're just letting individuals, users to come and help you grow that ecosystem. As someone who's been in the really early days of CryptoKitties, I, I never got much involved. So I'd love to hear what's been the progression, like how involved is the community and like and this day, like in two, 2019, um, and are you seeing some of the, are you seeing some of these qualities as well within your Axie Infinity community? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, you know, we, we mentioned, we talked about this before, right? Like the Axie community is amazing. They're running a scholarship program, right? So they're doing user acquisition, like kind of autonomously on their own. They're giving out Axies to people. People have made uh, tattoos. Um, people have made mini games, so I think like the level of community. Let's be clear, like the level of community excitement in Axie Infinity is like way surpassed, um, you know, what what we saw with CryptoKitties and what the current CryptoKitties community is like. And where is that yeah, I mean, I think I think that the, I think that you know our team kind of was able to you know kind of quickly really grasp like what was going on. Yeah, I mean, I think we've added more utility to our tokens. Um, you know, there's an actual battle system. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, you know, we have a really close relationship. Like, our developers are in the Discord. Um, so, like, there's no, there's no, like, barrier between, like, our developers, like, our core team members, um, and the community. So, yeah, I mean, I, you know, lo I love the, love the CryptoKitty people. And, you know, I think they're, they've done good stuff. And, the, and Dapper Labs will continue to do, like, amazing things in the future. But... Um, yeah, I, th I think like, you know, I, I love Axie, like I think our community is the strongest in the blockchain gaming ecosystem. Yeah, so I mean, I guess an important component, and I, that's what I wanted to get to, is understanding whether or not the sheer excitement about CryptoKitties was still there a year and a half, like almost, well, it's going to be, you know, a year and a half uh, from when it first launched. And you bring such a valid point, it's just a matter of, building something that, and having a, a direct dialogue with your community probably makes all the difference. And that's something that you guys have been able to do. And uh, so uh, where can we find you? And tell us as well, like, where can we find you on social media? How can we get started playing the game if we want to start playing the game today? Yeah, definitely. So uh, we are huge proponents and we love Discord. So basically what you should do is, you know, just Google like Axie Infinity Discord, the link should come up, you should join in, say that, you know, I watch, just go into general chat and say, hey, like I watched Luna and Jiho or, or Jeff, um, I'm interested in the Axie Scholarship Program, and then basically our community will help get you set up with the game. Awesome. Cool. So make sure to do that, guys, and I'm sure, well, you're on Facebook, you're all over social media as well. We use Twitter as well, just Axie Infinity on Twitter. Um, I'm Jihoz, Axie, J-I-H-O-Z underscore A-X-I-E um, on Twitter. Like, we're also, like, pretty active there. Um, and, yeah, you know, would love to, you know, welcome more people into the community. I think we're building something really uh, special, and you guys should come and kind of, yeah, see for yourself. Awesome. Well, thank you for taking the time to speak to us today. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of That Crypto Hustle Podcast. If you don't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel on YouTube and also follow us on iTunes or Stitcher. Bye, guys. Take care.